When Morgan sits down in 1915 and writes the PNAS paper, it's got to be one of the most beautiful papers that's ever written. In a way, it's a review article, but it's an amazing paper because it provided the foundation for the development of the field of genetics. It turns out not just to be a nice explanation, it turns out to be the most powerful tool we have today to solve a disease. Beginning in the 1900s, American geneticist Thomas Hunt Morgan carried out simple but elegant experiments with fruit flies in his lab at Columbia University. These experiments established for the first time that genes are physically located on chromosomes. So when genes were first conceived by Gregor Mendel in 1865, they were just totally abstract ideas. Until people who studied cells, cytologists, noticed this funny structure in the nucleus of cells called chromosomes. They had no idea what chromosomes were. Somehow, chromosomes might be the home on which genes lived. It's a great idea, chromosome theory of genes, but how would you ever prove it? That's where Morgan comes in. In the fly room, Morgan set out to test the effect of mutations on the physical traits of fruit flies. And he noticed one day a very unusual fly. Normal flies have red eyes. This one had white eyes. And it was a white-eyed male. And he decided to study its properties. So he crossed it to a normal female. And all of the offspring had normal red eyes. And then he crossed those first-generation flies again to a normal father, actually. And what he found was completely different than what anybody had found before. Namely, the white-eyed trait reappeared in the second generation, but only in the male flies. What was going on? Well, Morgan realized that the transmission pattern matched perfectly what you would expect for chromosome X and chromosome Y. So understanding that chromosomes were the carriers of genetics gave us a way to really tie together how one could follow transmission of traits through crosses and through inheritance. So it really gave us a mechanistic understanding of inheritance. Morgan's findings went further. They paved the way for a molecular understanding of human genetic disease. So he, I think, was the first to really recognize that genes could be linked together in how they were transmitted. Morgan never expected it, but what he and his colleagues in the fly room did by tracing inheritance and placing things on a chromosome is exactly what human geneticists do to map the genes today. Morgan's work has launched more than a hundred years of study because these questions, how do you duplicate a chromosome? How do you accurately transmit a chromosome? What happens when chromosome integrity or chromosome structure becomes perturbed? These are really active areas of research that are of direct medical relevance. Those areas of research owe an incalculable debt to Morgan's 100-year-old discovery enshrined in the dusty annals of early 20th century genetics.